Whew, almost there. Just 7,000 steps to go. One of the most intense yet boring things you can do in Yes Woman's Ground is falling onto a planet. But that's really just obeying the laws of gravity. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm incredibly anti-establishment, so I had to find a simple way to disrespect Isaac Newton, and I think I found it. We all know you can take off from a spaceship and leave a planet, but what if you used nothing more than your favorite pair of Timberlands? The idea of walking right off a planet made me more excited than a snail on a skateboard, but since all of the planets in Nadu's O2 are unrealistically spherical, I wouldn't be able to step right off the edge and would have to find a different way. One of the most unifying entities in the universe is stairs. They connect us to different floors, they build calf strength, they cause endless lawsuits, and they were the perfect way to bridge the gap between ground and vacuum. I knew I wanted to find a planet with tall mountains that could get me as close to the exosphere as possible. I traveled to planet Imperius, which has no atmosphere, so my jetpack can really dream big. On my first attempt, I started on an existing base, which was much too low, so it didn't get me very far. I could have placed another base so I could build out further, but I didn't want too many bases so close together and also didn't think of it. I went ahead and found what looked like the tallest mountain in the area. At the peak, I made a base and of course had to give it an appropriate name. I looked around and saw a single whispering egg, hence the infinitely creative name, Whispering Mountain. I got to work building Stairs 2.0, and the further along I got, the lower my confidence got. But eventually, I crossed the barrier. Uh, uh, there it is! Weird. The stark transition from light little jog to confident swim kick was hilariously sudden and opened up a world of questions. The first thing I wanted to do was build a landing platform so I could land and exit a ship just outside the planet's atmosphere. Next, I wanted to build a small house so I could test if it could replicate an oxygen sealed containment facility. It did not. I knew the outcome would likely be identical, but I had to check the deep water chambers as well. Come on, come on. What? If this thing can keep water out, it can certainly keep air in. It's basic science. I also built a series of short range teleporters so my journey to the top of the space steps could be much shorter. <laughs> I know it's not the best way to get my steps in, but I'll just do a couple extra burpees to compensate. My next question mark in need of an exclamation point was the old classic, can you jetpack off a planet from the surface? I already knew the answer to this thanks to several commenters on previous videos, but since I hadn't experienced it through my own eyes, there was no way I could sleep until I knew for sure. Also I was out of melatonin. For this test, I went to a planet with a very generous gravitational pull and unfortunately a depressingly flat surface. I went ahead and tested the propulsion on each jump burst. I figured out that if I wanted to climb to the necessary heights, I would have to do small bursts, wait for it to refill, and repeat. The math behind this was quite simple. <clears throat> Essentially, with each vertical force applied, there's a direct curvature result upon the extinguishing of the upward momentum where in which the vertical movement would continue in direct correlation to the last applied power, meaning I would continue my trajectory in a predictable arch until my inevitable descent, which would initiate far later if the prior velocity went past a certain threshold, around 15% of the jetpack's total power capacity, thereby extending the hang time and reducing the distance lost in the downward return, aiding the recharge capability by increasing the amount of time available to refill the tanks when compared to a longer upward descent, which would result in a detrimentally reduced window of time to recuperate the power lost on the rise and increase in velocity on the fall when accounted for the drag coefficient. I'll give you a second to take notes. I started this experiment near a series of vertical walls that I had created months ago for completely unknown reasons. The progress was slow, but it also took a long time. 
Soon, I had no landmarks for tracking my progression and had to rely solely on instinct. It wasn't the most mind-numbing thing I've done in No Bros Air, but it was pretty close. Fourteen minutes later, I broke through. Oh, I'm swimming in space again. That was worth it? My only regrets in these tests was in the criminal lack of clouds. So I traveled to a planet named after the greatest video game console of all time, Xavix, where there were towering mountains and very dense clouds. At a mountaintop plateau shaped like a lima bean, I made my final stairway to heaven, ironically traveling through an absolutely demonic storm. This time, I felt like it took no time at all to reach my destination, but something was different. I was supposedly in space, but I wasn't doing a dolphin impression. I was just walking around like a normal human named Greg. It didn't make any sense. I still haven't figured out the exact reason for this, but I have to assume it's because Xavix is such a hot vacation destination that it makes the gravitational pull stronger than any planet in the known universe. Regardless, at this point, there was only one goal left. The ultimate reverse diving board. It was time to fly up to my freighter. And go, 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 go. Okay, that's not happening. My main takeaway in building these staircases was how much resistance I had to fight through. The camera in particular constantly wanted to push me back down to a level viewing point. It made me realize just how much the game didn't want me to finish this construction, which of course made me want to finish it even more. I don't know what more could be accomplished from this phenomenon aside from the obvious floating disco in space, but it's clear that not even the developers of Yeah Ladies Land have any idea what to expect. Have you ever walked off a planet before? Have you ever eaten a salad fork because it tasted better than the lettuce? Do you also feel immense physical pain whenever you try to think of the concept of eternity? 